What's up, everybody? Chad Winstead here with Visual Flow, and today I am joined by an incredible human being by the name of Elizabeth Floyd. She's got me so pumped and energized already, and we haven't even started yet. I am just looking so forward to chatting with her today, and um, yeah, let's get it started. Elizabeth, say hello. From not my house. You're not in your house? Yeah, <laughs> we're in the middle of moving, so we're <laughs> living with family at the moment, so... Yeah, if you hear all fun background, that's why. <laughs> There's not going to be like jackhammers and construction work going yeah. on in the background, is no. it? No, okay. not at this house. Maybe at the other one. All right, all right. We'll forget there you. will be big dog barking. Big well, that's dogs. okay. We like big dogs around here. Yeah. <laughs> Mine will probably dogs. make an appearance at some point. Great. Well, yeah, Love so dogs. we are going to chat about creating uh, sun flares or creating you know, a fake but natural looking sun using the visual flow toolkit. Elizabeth's going to show us all the little tips and tricks on how to, how to do that, make it look natural. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you'll stick around and join us uh, real quick before we do get started. Uh, make sure that you click on, if you want, if you have any questions for Elizabeth or comments yes. or anything like that, make sure you click in the description and uh, allow StreamYard to Wrong access way. your comments. <laughs> so I'm not good at the Vanna White thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know which way to point either. It's not even... like a mirror. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and my screen is already backwards to how I'm normally sitting at my desk. So, right. Good times. Well, well, hey, let's. Um, while we still got some people coming in here, let me ask you a few questions. So uh, that way, yeah. everybody can get to know you a little bit. Now we see the Instagram tag down there, Elizabeth Lloyd Photography. Yeah. Um, so make sure you give her a follow on Instagram. She has amazing, beautiful work. And she's a lot of fun to be around if you've never met Elizabeth in person. <laughs> um, strongly recommend hanging out with her for a day. Yes. And um, your husband <laughs> is a pretty cool guy as well, I hear. He's very cool. Yeah, yeah. he also plays the guitar. Yeah. So, yep, we have lots I, of jamming. I don't actually house. play it. They, they're just for decoration. Right, right. Yeah, they look <laughs> cool on the wall. <laughs> well, cool. Where uh, Where do you guys live? Where are you located? We are in St. Louis. I actually live in Eureka. Um, okay. It's a suburb of St. Louis. Uh, we love it out here. There's a lot of like natural parks and things where we cycle and uh, just hang out. So it's awesome for engagement sessions too. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> we love the outdoor. Yeah. How's, I love how's the weather in St. Louis right now? So it's actually pretty cool. Um, it's been really, really gorgeous, just insane. And the leaves are starting to change. So that means I'm super busy right now with lots of engagement sessions. That's so, good. Yeah. Being busy right now is not a bad thing. Yeah. No, I'm so grateful <laughs> for the work. Awesome. <laughs> well, hey, I asked Tanya this last week, but how did you get your start in photography? I'm just curious. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'll have to tell you about my first wedding. So, um, I, <laughs> first I weddings are always good stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was actually just like taking classes and reading books. I had just gotten my first DSLR and, um, I was like, I really like doing this because I had studied art and, um, just really was enjoying photography. And I was actually at one of my best friend's weddings and <laughs> the photographer she hired was like super drunk and lost somewhere we didn't know where he was so i just pulled out my camera i was a bridesmaid and i started shooting <laughs> i was like i really like doing this this is super fun um so that's actually how i got my start in wedding photography <laughs> that's awesome so you were basically the backup quarterback and you just got that's, thrust in the action that's right yeah absolutely <laughs> and um you know i wasn't like an aunt sally or whatever photographing behind the photographer I, that's not you know <laughs> that's not at all what i was doing but um right. yeah but i ended up photographing the wedding so that was pretty fun <laughs> well that's that's quite a uh, first wedding experience yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah most people you know it's like your friend asks you to shoot the wedding or something but you don't go in at being a bridesmaid and then get thrust in the action that's pretty wild <laughs> All right. So just one more question for you before we get started. Yeah. Um, do you have any, uh, where do you find like your creative inspiration from? What kind of drives you as a photographer? What are oh you my gosh. looking for? All that fun yeah. stuff when, when you're that's, out, when you're taking photos. That's an awesome question. So I, I like to find inspiration through art 
um, just like old art. I love the romantic period. Um, I love nature, just like being outdoors. Um, that is really what inspires me, like hiking and just getting out there. So that's one of the reasons I love photography. But um, movies, like old movies, The Princess Bride. <laughs> uh, <Wow. laughs> yeah, uh, just anything music inspires me. Um, but I mean, gosh, I have all of you guys as friends and you're all incredible photographers. So you all inspire me in your own amazing ways. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, um, that's one of my big driving forces too, is just being friends with, with all you wonderful people and everybody's kind of got a little bit of a different style and it's just, yeah, it's amazing to follow everybody and see what they're coming up with and what they're creating. And it just inspires me to keep pushing myself and, and right, pushing my exactly. creative boundaries. And if I'm ever in a rut, I'll go, you know, look at the groups and see what people are up to and watch an old movie as, as well. Those are, those are, those are good ones. Yeah. For All sure. right. Well, well, I actually um, have a question for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so if you could bring any animal to every wedding that you shoot to help you shoot the wedding, what animal would you bring? Oh man, that's a great question. <laughs> Um, other than my my adorable husky dog, who just is an attention magnet. I um, thought you might mention your dog. Yeah, it would probably have to be him. But if if we're not sticking with our own pets, um, I would definitely bring a donkey because yeah, a pack donkeys are hilarious. <laughs> they are pretty funny. Although you might have a big mess on your hands. Probably, but you know, <laughs> it'd be worth it. <laughs> yeah, it would be worth it. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if you're ready to get started, we'll get started. We've got your screen sure. there. Um, you've yeah. already got it pulled up here. So let's do this. And um, let's see, just kind of go full screen with that if you'd like, or um, and give us your tips on creating those sunflares. Sure. So, I mean, how amazing are these retouching tools? They are definitely awesome. They're so incredible. So with my work, I usually go a little more wa um, warm, but the sky was just so incredible this day. Um, so I actually use Crush, uh, which is one of your favorites, I believe, Visual Flow. It is, it is. Yeah, um, I just love your work, how intense you make your skies and everything. But St. Louis was showing up for me this day and, um, I love the leading lines here and everything. So I'm like, I'm just going to keep that sky dramatic. Typically, I would come over and warm up the image a little bit more um, for my style. But I just really like this. Um, so let me go over to develop. Um, OK, you can see all my visual flow stuff here. Um, I did a lot to this image. So you can see what it looked like beforehand. And there's the lovely magma. Shout out to my favorite uh, tool for creating amazing photos. Let's yeah, um, get that magma plug in. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth is so a amazing. ambassador, so she's not biased. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no, they're incredible. Um, but oh my gosh, these V flow. So I went in and I like darkened the sides and lit them up a little bit more just with these tools over here. They're so amazing. And I know Tanya really touched on that. This over here is just like yeah. my favorite thing. But I actually put a lens flare in here, um, which is more kind of like a round. It's not necessarily like a, you know, a flare. It's more like, like the sun would look like, like a round, yeah. a round. You know, yeah, that's sun. that's a good point. It's <laughs> you know, it's not exactly like um, when you think of flare. There's a couple different ways you can think of it, but um, it's more of a uh, it's more of a tool to mimic the sun. So if you're right, trying to get exactly. that flare look, there's certain different ways you have to play around with it, and maybe put it just outside of the picture, just outside of the frame to get those kind of uh, those warm uh, rays or or soft flares, if you will. Right. So I come over here and I hit the flare. And then I'll probably make it a little bit smaller, but the cool thing is, is you can just do whatever you want. So I would just come in this general area, like the sun is just like hidden in here and you can just make it a little brighter. You can come over here and play around with the colors. 
um, which I love to do to make it a little more orangey or whatever you're feeling for the image. It's super cool. And you can, you know, you can mess around with the exposure and contrast, um, make it a little darker, if you will. Um, and the dehazing button is what I found to be the most helpful in uh, creating this. You just kind of, uh, for more natural, more like diffused look of the sun, you would just come down this way. And then this would make it more, you know, like the actual sun, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So it's a super cool tool. I really like it. Um, yeah. And to do this, I may like actually make this image a little warmer. So got to get those warm tones in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's a, that's a great point when, when you're showing um, how you're actually tweaking the brush itself. I think that's an important to note is all the retouching toolkits and even the presets themselves, there's still room for you to go in and, and tweak and fine tune Absolutely. however you want. You don't have to just stick with what the brush gives you. You can always go in there and tweak it to your liking or tweak it to your style, if you will. And um, I think that's a, that's definitely important to note. And um, Tanya showed last week that she actually uses like the black and white sun flare a lot and changes the color yeah. of that as well. And I thought that was just really, um, really smart for one, but really cool and unique to see uh, the two different ways that you can use the two sun flares and get two totally different looks. Right, exactly. Um, I like to use it too, like, and I don't have an image here, but like with getting ready, um, uh -huh. I'll often take something and layer my image if there's like water bottles or whatnot, um, just to make it look a little more clean and I'll just layer it with a, the black and white sun flare. Nice, nice. Just like, make it look like a, you know, a curtain or something like that. Right. So this one, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was, I was just going to mention, you know, we, we were talking about it before we actually went live um, on how you can, you know, you can introduce off camera flash and use gels to mimic sunlight as well. Um, and we oftentimes use in the, the mag gels and uh, we call it the mag sun. And yeah. where we're creating that look. And sometimes um, I'll actually use that sun flare tool to enhance it even more. Let's say if I didn't get enough flare into the lens like I wanted to, I'll actually go in there and do a radial t radial filter over my light or over the sun that's already there if it's a sunny image and just right. enhance that sun flare even more. Yeah, and that's awesome. I found that's how I actually use the sun flare tool the most. Same. That's how I use it the most as well. I really Perfect. love it. And I'm guessing you're going to show us on this image right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is actually, um, so this is a luminar sky. Oh, okay. um, and I know Ray has played around with those before, but I wanted yeah. to let you in on that secret because you can see how I changed it over from. But that's how I put the little sun flare in here just to brighten nice. it up a little bit. Yeah. Just to give it a little more pop but yeah same thing you just come out over here and you play around with the brush to where it fits your image um, and you can go into the hue and um, find adjustment with the saturation and everything it's pretty incredible that's awesome so uh, the just, contrast. just as a quick step-by-step -step real quick so everybody understands you're you're editing the image in lightroom first with the with the uh the vflow pack and then you're pulling it into yes. luminar to do the sky swap Yes, and then absolutely. After you, yeah, after you pull it back into Lightroom from Luminar, you're kind of doing that twice baked thing where you're going into with the brush right. or fine tuning, right? Right. And the reason you want to do that is because everybody's using the same skies and just to make it a little more your own and <laughs> different <Right>. for your couples, <laughs> uh, you can go in and change it up a little. So, yeah. Yeah, Ray I cracked me up that. when we were talking about the helicopter sky. He know, you know, everybody knows the sky that has the little <laughs> helicopter in it from Luminar. And some right. people choose to leave it in or, or take it out. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, so you can even do it with black and white. That's what's cool about this. Um, so with this, here's the image imported. And I love shooting engagement sessions around golden hour. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just coming in here with the preset crush, black and white, and then just playing around with white clipping. And then you can go over here 
and Tanya showed you how to do this last time with the, sorry, this is layered behind my other monitor. No worries. So we're getting some love from Pi. He is watching the video. Aww, right now. It's a good to see you both. So good to see him. Thanks for joining us, Pi. He just had a little baby. He did. I think he's supposed to be on paternity leave still right now, aren't you, Pi? So I just grabbed the black and white here. Uh -huh. And you can come in this way, just bring more interest into your image. And this is what I was talking about, too, with layering it when they're getting hair and makeup or whatever, just even with a black and white image. This right here is the wheat that I shot through. But I could even create that look with the sunflower brush. It's pretty incredible. Right. That made it pretty busy, but <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, that's this, awesome. That's these a, tools have that's a like a beautiful image. Oh, thank you. This couple was just so fun. They just wanted to be married, right? And they were just so just. We had a blast. Yeah, I just love these brushes. Awesome. Okay, so. Yep, keep going. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Let's see. A little behind the scenes here. With a little modern. And then just playing around with a little sun flare that's here. Nice. Is that the same couple? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I like her hat. <laughs> yeah, I get hat girls. I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm surprised you don't have a hat on right I now. I know, exactly. It, it feels weird wearing one around in the house with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> when I go out, I put one on, but yeah. yeah. I've had a bad hair day for about two months now. So oh I've, my gosh, I've been wearing same. a I've been wearing a hat every day myself. <laughs> I, I think I still have paint in my hair from painting our house. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I'd lighten this up a little. But I love the toolkit. It is incredible. I love to throw in like a vignette. Yes. And then you can come over here to make your sun flare pop a little more. And just bring it in, make it a little more intense. It's perfect. So you're not yeah. really tweaking anything. You're just literally brushing it right over the existing yeah, sunlight to enhance it, right? It's so easy. Perfect. That pie, he's he's a smart guy. Yeah, he's he's pretty all right. <laughs> don't don't give him a bigger head, though. <laughs> okay, <guy>. okay. <laughs> I'll dial it down. <laughs> pie, we think you're all right. You're just okay. You're mediocre. Yeah, you're okay. Presets are, presets are cool, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we dig your presets. Awesome. Hey, guys, if y'all have any questions for Elizabeth, yes. uh, please Speaking ask. Questions. We've got we've got no comments so far. We need some comments. We need some, yeah, comment some, people. some live action going on here. So <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm missing my my lighting in my office. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm in the Stark office today. I apologize. No, I brought fine. I brought my ring light, but I realized that I packed away the uh, cord. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But again, you can just go on over here and just add sun flare where you feel like it looks good for the image. Perfect. It's really just so easy. Yeah, I think I, I use it like whenever I'm trying to enhance it or if I don't have any golden hour or sunlight or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like less is more sometimes with the sun flare tool where you just need right. that little tiny subtle pop. So, right. So just bringing it just outside of the frame and letting kind of the edges bleed over into exactly. the frame makes all the difference in the world. For sure. Another lovely image there. Where was that taken at? Yeah. That doesn't look this, like St. Louis. No, this was not St. Louis. This was in Vegas. Awesome. A little elopement. And this one I was playing around with. That's a cool you spot see how too. dark. Yeah, this is this was an 
an old silica plant that's kind of close by that they've turned into a park. Nice. So it's like our little take on a beach here in the Midwest <laughs> since we don't have one. Right. Um, and as you can see, I, I went in over here with the sun flare and warmed it up quite a bit over here on the left. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. So can you explain your reasoning for, um, I guess, for shooting, you know, shooting that way as far as the exposure goes, and then also um, what you're enhancing over there on that side of the frame? Yeah. So um, I'm just following the natural light, just cueing from the natural light. And um, I love to play around with the aperture and just kind of play with your lens to capture the most sun, you know, just being aware of light. Um, you'll get a little bit of that lens flare. Obviously, I didn't in the shot, so I was able to do it with the lens flare tool. Right. Yeah. But that's typically when I'm not putting, I mean, before <laughs> I created the lens flare tool, that's what I was trying to do is just, you know, um, you're going to get most lens flare with a zoom lens, I feel. Um, and I don't really play around with uh, the um, lens, you know, where you can capture more flare by putting mm -hmm. certain things on your lenses. But um, <clears throat> just moving it around, you can capture it. Right. And opening it up. One, um, one tip that uh that i kind of stumbled upon at least with uh with some of my sony glass um to get it to flare more is especially when you're shooting like when you're creating it with the magma gels like we talked about a while ago right or even just shooting into the sunlight itself is to frame the the light source actually just inside of the frame not try right. to get it outside of the frame but frame it inside of the frame where you get a little bit more flare and then you can always crop out that that source you know in post-production uh, but I found that shooting directly into it as close as you can uh, to putting it in the frame helps out a lot to get yeah, that, that hazy look. Right. That's a good tip. <clears throat> awesome. Well, do you have any more images you would like to to showcase? Yeah. Yeah. I can play around with some more. Perfect. Um, this couple, like this isn't a finished edit right here that you can see from the beginning. Just bringing that in. And then I'd probably come over here and vignette. Warm it up a little. Okay, I have a question for you while I'm editing this. Okay. So would you rather be able to sing as good as Beyonce or run as fast as Usain Bolt? All right. So when you say sing as good as Beyonce, do you, yeah. want, are you talking of actually having Beyonce's voice? Cause that might look a little weird with me. Yeah. Maybe, um, maybe not on you. Not having okay. so just like sing actual, good yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm going to go with that because if I could sing like that, in addition to being able to play guitar, um, <laughs> that would I be would nice, probably right? be on tour right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. I wouldn't um, be a photographer. <laughs> right. Exactly. There you go. Running that fast would be awesome, but it would be nice on wedding days. Right. <laughs> Could almost be in two places at once. <laughs> right, exactly. While you are tweaking that and everybody's seeing what you're doing here, we did have a question from a Jordan. Oh yay. Um he said he asked Hi. for a style with uh, artificial light with uh, with using Magmod. Uh, what VF package would be recommended? Um, oh, wow. So good question. yeah, it's a good question. And um, what we're showing, what we're showcasing here is the, uh, the visual flow retouching toolkit more so than the, uh, than the stylized packs. So I recommend finding a, uh, going on the visual flow website, looking at all the samples of the different packs and figuring out which one speaks to you in terms of uh, style that you want to accomplish uh, with the color and contrast and all that. Um, but we definitely highly recommend picking up the retouching toolkit along with whatever pack you do decide on. Right. Um, Elizabeth kind of shoot. Elizabeth kind of uses all the packs. She uses Modern Crush and the Mood Pack that's yes. upcoming. Yeah. Um, this is Mood Pack here. Yeah. So you can see some of the different examples as far as the mm -hmm. contrast and color goes here. This I'm typically new. more of a uh, of a of a Modern and Crush guy mm. myself, but I've found that I've actually been using the Mood Pack. Um, 
on certain types of images and just tweaking right. the contrast a little bit more, increasing the contrast some to fit our style. And it does a really wonderful job as well. But um, but yeah, just I think it all depends on on which style kind of speaks to you the most. I think modern and crush complement one another, whereas pastel and mood are two totally different looks. Right, exactly. Um, if you see if you see a lot of my work, um, a lot of it, especially the stuff when I'm using MagMod and off camera flash, a lot of it is edited with crush to give it that extra punch. Whereas a, quite a bit of my natural light stuff is more so with the modern pack. All right, so explain this one here. What are you? What do you have going on here with the uh, with the arch and the dress? Yeah, so this is the Four Seasons in St. Louis. It's a really popular spot for couples to get ready. They love they love the shot. So I just thought I'd make it a little more interesting using some sun flare. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just playing around with it to see what I think looks good. So where um, where are you putting the sun flare in that one? I was going to put it around the dress just to bring some interest into it. Okay. I think. And is that the mood pack there? Is that what you? I did. Yeah. I used to, okay. Yeah. We could even make the sky pop a little more. Nice. I love these types of shots where you include the details in the, in the scenery. Yeah. You know, so go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, usually I have the bride in there as well. Right. right. Just to get more interest. But um, yeah, for this, I mean, like they just want, they just want to look back and see what it looked like that day. Right. Yeah. That was what I was going to mention is anytime I can include the, you know, the bride or um the subjects into the uh, into the detail shots i always try and tell the story or at least where it was so if i'm hanging if i'm hanging up the dress by itself or the shoes or something like that i'm almost always going to go find the main door of the venue or somewhere in the venue to uh to hang those details and that way you can at least showcase the story of where the details are and uh, right. where the wedding is and all that fun stuff exactly so storytelling tips <laughs> yes for sure Man, that's a beautiful spot. Yeah, it's it's a crazy beautiful hotel. I don't want to make it look too unnatural, but just to kind of give it some interest. Right. Have you um have you tried to create uh, like sun rays with the sun flare tool? I've played around with it a little bit. Yeah. Um, just like in an image like this, like we were talking about, like bringing it in. Yeah. Um, just the corner. I feel like it matches that the best in terms right. of the sun rays. You have to kind of be a good painter to do that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you have to be a good painter to be uh, to be an editor. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Lightroom makes it a little bit easier with the masks and, and yeah, the layer sure. mask, but, but that's awesome. All right, so yeah. do you have any others that you would like to share? Any other tips and tricks for our viewers out there? <laughs> Don't do what I just did. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I just say you have to get the you have to get the um, the pack. It's incredible. I use it so much with every wedding. Right. There's just yeah. uh, there's a ton of of different uh, ton of different things in there to to enhance your images. They really have um, you know a brush for just about anything. Right, exactly. So this is the one that was our cover photo. Yeah. Lovely shot. Thank you. So is that so, um, is that the sun up at the top? Is that the yeah? So sun? it's a little bit of natural sun, and then I went okay. in there with the brush just to make it a little more, you know, obvious. Right. Perfect. Well, now that you mentioned <laughs> it, um, you know, this week is a uh, golden hour week in the group. So we're asking you guys to share uh, images that you've taken in golden hour, whether you've created golden hour with the off camera flash or anything like that. Um, so we'd love to see those before and afters in the, in the group. So use the hashtag golden hour 
and um, and share your your favorite golden hour images within the group. And we'll give you a chance to be featured on the uh, Visual Flow Instagram, um, on the blog, all that fun stuff. We're starting to uh, to ramp up some blog features. So we're trying to feature as many of you amazing artists out there as we can. So you have to post to get featured. All right. So we'd love to see your work. All right, Elizabeth, these these are awesome photos, awesome tips. Thank um, do you. you have any uh, do you have any other tips for the viewers out there? Oh, <laughs> um, just just be about your couple and photograph their day and enjoy your job. That's uh, that's key. <laughs> that's key. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, if you're good, um, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We'll see if we have any uh, any comments or questions from our viewers out there. Yeah, and I just good. wanted to say thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, please follow Elizabeth on Instagram. You see her uh, her tag here. Um, she's got beautiful, beautiful work, and she's an awesome person. And um, if you have any questions or you missed this and you're just now tuning in, make sure you go back and rewatch from the beginning. Uh, so now we'll open it up for questions. Um, Marissa Joy Daly says, so good. Hi, Marissa. How are Aww. you? Hi, Marissa. I love her. She's so sweet and yes, talented. She yes, she is. And she's from North Carolina, too, originally. Ah, originally. wow. Originally. All right. So looks like a bunch of people are joining in now that we're finishing up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> we must have started off the morning too early for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I can ask you another question if you want. Yeah, let's, let's play Q&A real quick. Okay, let's do it. Okay, would you rather be trapped in a Jurassic in Jurassic Park or be in the Hunger Games? Oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's tough. So judging by the two movies, I feel like um, my odds of survival might actually be higher in the Jurassic Park. <laughs> I feel like I, I, could out, right. I feel like right. I could outsmart the dinosaurs. I don't know if I can outsmart um like yeah. 12 other humans. Um, I think that's smart whatever. because there's only one person that ends up alive. So Yeah. Yeah. If we work together as a group, we can escape the dinosaurs, but we can't work together as a group in the Hunger Games. And right. it doesn't work that way. <laughs> that's it. No. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Tanya and I closed out with a dance party last week, okay. so I'm not going to make you it. dance if you don't want to, but <laughs> I might be doing the robot. I don't know. Okay. Well, are you going to play guitar? If you play guitar, I'll dance. Oh man. What do you want me do to it. play? <laughs> I don't know what to play. I freeze up. What's, when your, what's play. your favorite song? Um, it'd probably be, be Joe Exotic. I saw a tiger, but <laughs> Is it your favorite song. I, I'm not. I'm not recreating that one again. I've already done that. Mm -hmm. Done that for Magmod, so we're we're gonna stay away from that one. <laughs> I could okay, play what's a, your? I could play a song titled uh, Elizabeth because that's also Do my it. wife's name. Yeah, and it wouldn't. Be I weird. love it. Yeah. <laughs> it for I don't know weird. any songs on guitar named Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Well, just play some chords for. Okay, how about this? We'll end the video just on a an instrumental guitar track. Sounds good. Okay. All mm. right. This got really awkward really fast. We got to figure out a better way. To <laughs> Sorry, I, it was me. I'm awkward. <laughs> I've <laughs> got to get my guitar. So bear with me. At one least second. I'm not giggling my head off like normal at the at these uh, interviews. So, what records do you have hanging up? All right. On your wall. So, Chad, yes. what records do you have on the wall? Um, I have a hodgepodge of records. So I uh, I love all types of music. And okay. so there is some hard rock, some heavy metal, some alternative, some classic rock, and some queen and all that fun stuff. So nice. we've got some queen, some Rage Against the Machine, Deftones, Ooh. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Alt-J, 21 cool. Pilots. You like it all. Tool. Led Zeppelin. Uh, I think I have Jimi Hendrix and Mumford and Sons. <laughs> nice. Okay. You do have yes. a nice round, rounded collection. Yes. So I, I don't know what to play. I am frozen in time right now. <laughs> but we'll just play a classic. Nice. Yes. All right. Thank you all for joining us today. Yes. Thanks, guys. And uh, catch us next time on Visual Flow Presets. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Elizabeth. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank and, you. Um, yeah. If y'all have any questions for her, drop them in the, uh, drop yeah, them in the group. Please. And please rewatch and have a great rest yeah. of your day. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.